Christianity produces weak men, Ahab type spirits. Let's talk about it. Glory to the Most High, Yah Shalom. Thank you for tuning in to another Righteous Spirit Food episode. Man, today we back at it, back in the trenches, you know, handling kingdom business. Man, you know, growing up in the Christian church, I didn't hear any kind of message that was outlining the roles and the responsibilities and teaching men and women how to, you know, be righteous brothers and sisters in the union of marriage you know, in relationships, you know, what to stay away from, what to avoid. But you're going to realize due to a lot of the ways in, you know, Christianity, and I mean the culture of Christianity, not the people in Christianity, because a lot of them don't know better and they haven't came up out of this. But the culture of Christianity in itself over the years has adopted a lot of feminism and feminist type ways and this is why some of the stuff is happening in the church. When you look at the divorce rate being 70% of divorces filed by women, and you look at the portion of these women that are Christian, and then the percentage goes up to 90% if they're college educated, and you would say like, man, you know, what are they really teaching men that are, you know, wanting to draw closer to God? And I can honestly tell you that growing up in the Christian church, and then in early adulthood, you know, you would hear this feel good message. You know, you would pull some money out from the ATM. You would bring it in church. And as a man, you would, you know, come there one way, give your money and leave the same exact way. They weren't pouring into men and women righteously, but just tickling everybody ears. And when we look at this, you know, there's a lot of soft leadership in doggone the culture of Christianity. It produces a lot of Ahab type spirits in men and men don't know how to stand firm on the truth of the Most High Yah. And at some point when you are the head of your household, you are going to have to stand firm on something and the word of the Most High Yah is going to have to be your comforter because chances are you're going to be given an ultimatum as a man. You're either going to choose the Most High Yah or you're going to choose me as your wife and the family. But when you start to realize, when you hear that ultimatum, if you're not prepared for it and you haven't been groomed and learned the ways of the Most High Yah and what he's outlined for you to do as a man, then you're going to fold every time. And you will never fulfill and rise to the occasion of the will of the Most High Yah and what he has outlined for you because you're too busy trying to fulfill the will of your woman or your wife. And when doing that, you're getting distracted from his purpose from you. And today I want to read some scriptures to you that let you know as a man, you need to be ready to stand flat footed on the word of the Most High Yah when those ultimatums come and you're trying to get your house in order because you're going to get all kind of doggone ultimatums might not, you know, might get deprived of sex, might get threatened to leave. And when you look at these statistics, you're going to realize that a lot of men, you know, instead of buckling down on the word of Yah and letting that the, the fruit of the spirit keep you at peace, you know, you fold like aluminum foil, crumble every time to the workings and the likings of your woman. And you will realize as a man, you haven't been groomed by the Christian culture for leadership. You have been groomed for likership and you have been groomed to support all of these doggone feminist agendas. And that's why you can't stand firm. That's why your word doesn't hold up in the house. That's why you're not setting a righteous God fearing example because you've never been taught how to live one. You know, when is the last time you've heard some of these messages in church teaching men and women, you know, how they're supposed to be in the union of marriage? Ephesians chapter five, verse 25, husbands love your wife just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up for her. It doesn't say wives love your husband as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. It doesn't say that. When you look at first Corinthians chapter seven, verse three, the husband must fulfill his duty to the wife and likewise also the wife to her husband. The husband has a duty to fulfill. It's outlined in scripture, but Christian culture, they don't teach you that. They're going to teach you all of this other stuff, all of this feel good message. And then when you have to stand firm, you're going to wonder why you don't have a backbone as a man. Ephesians chapter five, verse 26 for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ also is the head of the church. He himself being the savior of the body. 
you're not finna hear that in no doggone Christian church. Not in Christian culture, because when you look at the population of Christianity and Christian culture, it's predominantly women. And women are the biggest tithers, so they don't want to mess up their money, so they don't teach you how to be a doggone husband, how to stand up righteously as a man of God. Also, here's another one that would have their faces in uproar, but it's clearly biblical. Colossians chapter 3, verse 18. Wives, be subject to your husband as fitting to the Lord. But you will have a lot of these, a lot of these Christian women, you'll realize that they are the head of the household and they got this man in the house who they really don't respect because he's not rising to the occasion. He's never put them in their place. He's never stood flat footed on the word of God. So what do you do? You end up getting manipulated like Ahab did by Jezebel. First Peter chapter three, verse seven, you husbands in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker, since she is a woman and show her honor as the followers here of grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. It's not calling women weak, it's just saying that they are the weaker vessel. And when you think about this, you probably don't know how to be a man and to stand firm in the word of the Most High Yah under Satan attacking her because scripture says she is weaker, not weak, but every time she gets attacked and comes at you, and you have the opportunity to stand firm in the word of God to be that example, chances are the Christian church hasn't taught you that. And here's another scripture that lets you know that when you are, you know, a living sacrifice for the Most High Yah and, and your faith is being tested by the attack of Satan on a woman or through your woman or through your wife, you know, scripture keeps it real to where, you know, if you love certain people more than you love the Most High Yah, and this can deter you from doing the will of the Most High Yah, you're not fit for the kingdom. So all of the all of the, the, the men out here that are in these Christian churches falling asleep, you know, they're not hearing a message on how to be stronger men. They're hearing about faith, they're hearing about grace, they're hearing about all these different, you know, stories that's in the Bible, but they're not getting the meat of the message on how they need to govern their home. And when you look at this, Look at how many homes actually have men in them nowadays. Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. He who loves the father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Man, when you think about that, man, not everybody is, is going to want to follow you on this journey. Everybody is following you on this journey as a man as long as they can get the resources that you offer. But when it comes to being obedient and fully submitted to the will of the Most High Yah, as men of God are supposed to be, you're going to realize that's going to be a problem in your relationship. You're going to realize that that's when you're going to really encounter some spiritual warfare. And you may not even know a demon is manifesting in your doggone wife because she's giving you an ultimatum to choose her or to choose God. She can't lead you to eternal life, but faith in our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, can. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Check out the link in the description because I'm only shooting it gun barrel straight. Bow.